Think back when you were young, sitting in a bed at summer vacation without a worry in the world. You look up and you notice the poster on the wall. That dream motorcycle. Sexy, fast, elegant. You see, this transalp has never been on any kid's walls. It was never looked up to, never held as the ultimate desire. But maybe the problem wasn't the Transalp after all. Maybe the problem was us. Because just like this Honda, we needed to mature, to grow old. Then and only then could we realize why the Tranny is one of the coolest bikes ever made. Why, you might ask? Well, it's obviously not the design. With the 650, Honda tried to give its adventure bike a more sophisticated, road-oriented look, make it look more aerodynamic, and that had the side effect of chopping off some of its remaining off-road image. Instead, it was left with a road cruiser persona. I wouldn't call it ugly, but I'd call it questionable. Like, what's up with the kilometric rear fender? Or with the stock handguards that look like snow shovels? Or with the twin shotgun exhaust? It just looks like random elements thrown together in a package that's not offensive, but not pleasing either. And I'm not just saying that, people were saying the same thing when it launched too. But then maybe its story lies somewhere else. A lot of bikes have a deep story to tell. Stories of passion, of racing, of engineering teams giving their all in a ridiculous quest to achieve the unobtainable. The Transalp though, it lacked any of it. I mean, I can tell you that the factory was moved from Japan to Italy in 1997, or that it featured their latest and greatest immobilizer system. And <sighs> who am I kidding? In a way, it doesn't have its own fascinating story. I tried digging, finding something that would make it stand out, and I came flat with nothing. And in that moment, I realized what the Transalp story really is. It was never about the machine. It was always about the people riding it. If we take Honda's own commercial at face value, they compare the feeling of riding this bike to piloting a small airplane. I mean, thrills-wise, they're as different as they could ever get. But in reality, the commercial tells a story of two people. And that's what the Transalp has always done. It allowed us to make our own stories, our own tales that we could tell the grandkids. It was never about the motorcycle. It was always about what it enabled us to do. Introducing my loner example, a crusty, busted-up Honda 650 Transalp. It cost about 800 euros five years ago, and uh, you can quickly see why. The speedo has basically never worked, the odometer shows roughly 50k. How many times it's been at 50k, that's anyone's guess. None of the dashboard lights work, the fuel gauge is so yellowed that it's genuinely hard to see through. The entire front end rattles and feels like it's going to come apart. The steering head bearings are crying for a swap, and I would say the same about the four coil, but I really doubt there's any left in there. These brakes can only stop you after reciting 10 prayers, the seat is ripped and fixed with duct tape, I could go on this forever. If neglect was a prize given at ECMA, this would be the star of the show. Obviously this bike has seen better days, and yet you start the engine and it never skips a beat. It chugs along like nothing ever happened. When the end of the world comes, rats will take over on Transalps. But you see, that's the beauty of this bike. Every scratch, every little ding, it tells a story. A story of humans adventuring, falling in love, sad stories, happy stories, and everything in between. It's hard to believe, but this bike has seen the deserts of Tunisia multiple times. It has toured Europe. It has taken two people on amazing adventurous dates. It has really seen it all. If only it could talk. In order to understand what this Honda really is, we have to first realize what it isn't. On a fun scale, this would sit right underneath a geography teacher. There's nothing inherently thrilling about it, nothing to raise the hair on your back. And look, 
I know people have built this off-road reputation around it and it's all based on one thing, the 21 inch front wheel. Well, really, that's where the off-road pedigree stops. It's slow, soft and wallowy with a flimsy plastic skid plate. It weighs more than a Boeing 747. And don't just take my word for it, take Honda's own. At launch, they call the Transalp a new concept touring bike. The words dirt or gravel were never on the itinerary. It was never meant to be a serious off-roader. What was it? If I were to call it a word, I'd say misunderstood. You see, it was always a road-centric motorcycle with its smooth, unbothered V-twin power plant. It was always made for comfort above all, hence its couch-like suspension. It was built as a simple concept, nothing too fancy, just the stuff you need, like the dedicated fuel gauge. It was simple, worry-free transport. And in doing that, it became this rugged, unkillable platform. A platform that really allowed you to tour the world without a worry and do that in real life, not just in commercials. When I first stepped foot over it, I thought the handlebars were made of jello. I also was surprised because I never thought a manufacturer could make a V-twin this boring. It's like they sucked all the life out of it. Sure, it works, it goes, but it transmits as much emotion as a German ambassador. You see, judging this motorcycle just by the facts, it shouldn't be admired. It should have never received its legendary status, and yet, it did. And you know what? I get it, and dare I say, this Transalp might be one of the best motorcycles Honda has ever made. Because, in a way, the entire motorcycling community has to pay an homage to this bike. For what it did for us. What the Transalp is doesn't matter. What this Honda represents, that's what really matters. Even more so than the GS. You see, the BMW has always been this icon of adventure, but the Transalp was the bike regular people went back to and trusted. This motorcycle's only purpose is to take us on our own adventures, to allow us to explore the world and explore ourselves. It's not what adventure is portrayed today with crazy tricks done by professional trials riders. It's the adventure that us, regular people, can and will do. It's a soft roader that's built like a tank so it can be hustled into tricky off-road situations. And yes, the 21 inch front wheel, it does help. It's a bush bike. It will never traverse crazy sections with style or elegance, but it will get you there. You'll push it, tow it, throw it off a cliff, and then hit the starter button and you'll hear it roar into life again. Because at the end of the day, that's the real story of the Transalp. It's a bike that allowed ordinary people to tell extraordinary stories. Unbelievable. There's one more thing I keep having a hard time with. You see, Honda always had the Africa Twin. In its first renditions, it wasn't even that much bigger than a Transalp. So why did they build the latter? You see, this concept started in the 80s, when the Japanese wanted to use the publicity of their Dakar project in order to sell something for the masses. But they also realized they needed a product for the common man. You see, Soichiro Honda had a philosophy. Honda's products are known all over the world not simply because they are good in quality, but because of the philosophy behind the products. Our policy of creating something which will serve the interests of people. Of people. Of all people. Not just daredevils, racers, niches. And in a way, the Transalp reflected Mr. Honda's philosophy perfectly. I tried finding a meaning behind this adventure bike, behind the Transalp. And yet... What I found was that all along, I've been asking the wrong question. Because there is one question that this Honda can help us all answer. What does adventure mean to you?